So this is my first demo ever, and it's a little demo on how to accurately draw a pine cone from observation using charcoal pencil for a natural science illustration lesson that I do with my fourth grade students. So for anyone out there that could use this, this is for you. To start, we place the pine cone on the paper using a regular HB pencil. We very carefully mark the edges and ends of the pine cone and then we're going to just connect those lines so we get the overall size and scale of the actual pine cone and then place the pine cone directly in front of our paper so that we can observe it. Using a charcoal pencil, this one happens to be a General's Charcoal HB Hard Pencil. We're going to start at one end of the pine cone, so down at the end, and just draw what we see. And the key to this is to draw only what we actually see and not what we think a pine cone should look like. As we're drawing, we want to pay very careful attention to the shape and size of each individual pine cone scale. And you will notice that the further up the pine cone you go, the bigger the scales tend to get. So this drawing assignment is really an exercise in careful observation. It's important to note that the scales can go outside of your original guideline because pine cones not necessarily stay within that guideline. Now for a normal demonstration, I wouldn't necessarily complete the entire pine cone because I want my students to be able to have time to work on their own. But this video is for any students or teachers who would like to see the entire process start to finish?
Now pine cones do come in different shapes and sizes. So the marks and lines that I'm making for this pine cone might not work for a round pine cone or for a pine cone that is a little more compact. Um, those spines grow a little differently than this sort of pine cone that has uh, um, scales, not spines, scales that are a little more opened up. I'm still working fairly quickly compared to what I would normally like to do for a drawing like this. This is something I would want to work on very slowly. But for the sake of the video, I'll go a little faster. So I've got my basic lines for my pine cone, and I can go in and erase any pencil marks that may be bothering me. You know, it might be in the way of making this look like a finished drawing at the end. Alright, so now that I have the scale and basic shape of the pine cone, and it looks pretty much like my one that I was looking at, I'm going to go back in and use the charcoal pencil to redefine the things I've already done and to also add some shading, some value. And when I'm doing this, I'm still looking at my original pine cone that I observed to see that I'm getting the shading to really represent what is really there. And when I'm making my marks, I want to try to follow along with the shape of each individual scale. Treat each one as its own unique thing. And some of them might be darker than others or have more shading than others. They're each in their own separate part. And these two overlap and sort of nest inside each other which makes them very interesting and challenging to draw. And like most things, if they're lit from the top, which this one is, shadows tend to be darker along the bottom.
our next step, we are going to be doing some blending. So if we don't go dark enough, in this step with the charcoal pencil, that blending won't really show. And it's okay to redefine or refine areas that you drew previously if you notice that they're a little bit off from the actual, actual pine cone. Always remember though, do not move the pine cone around as you're drawing it because that will change the way the light hits it. So it will change the values that you see. And it could also change some of the proportions because of the view that you'll have will change. So always keep your pine cone in the same position while you are drawing it. Now, in the one that I am looking at, there are some pieces that are really, really dark near the end. Okay. So now I'm going to start blending it with a little blending tool. And I want to try to get some shades of gray in the parts that are not exactly getting light. So at this step, you really want to pay careful attention that you're not making the whole thing gray. You don't want to take your tool and just go back and forth across the drawing. You want to go on each individual scale, just like you did when you were drawing them. You want to always, always, always be looking at your reference pine cone make sure that the shadows that you're making and the, where the light is hitting is accurate to life. Now with older students, or perhaps more advanced students, in the very final stages, it may be an option to add some white highlights with a white charcoal pencil, or to just go back in and make those highlights using an eraser. So at this step, you're going to go in and clean up your drawing with an eraser. And you can use a regular pencil eraser or a kneaded eraser. Either one will erase the charcoal marks. So these are any smudges that were made by your hand as you were 
shading in. You can also use the eraser to go back in and pull out some highlight areas. So for this pine cone, it does have some really white spots on it, so I am going to use a white charcoal pencil to bring out some of those bright areas. And this is just a general charcoal white pencil. Now when it does mix with the black, you get almost a silvery, silvery gray. And since it is a little bit brighter than the paper, it really does a great job of giving some highlights to the pine cone. Okay, so that would be a finished, faster than I would normally go, pine cone that is ready to be mounted onto paper and displayed.